both best friends and then you kind of made a... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You made this film together and it's obviously it's about you, Will, uh, getting cancer and... So what, what effect did Will's cancer have on you both um, and, and on your friendship? Um, well, I mean, you know, I think the f that when I was actually six, six years ago, we didn't know how to deal with it and the, the way we, we did sort of cope with it was through humor yeah. and through the idea of this movie. I mean, we would, we kind of, you know, everyone has this idea of that when you have cancer, it's just really bleak and grim and everyone sits around and cries, but, but we, there were lots of, you know, funny moments, there were lots of really absurd moments, there were moments that were, you know, painful and sad, but we kind of would look at these moments that where there was humor and we would think there's never been a movie yeah. like that ever done you know, we should, we should do, we should make a, 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 a comedy about cancer that actually relates to what we're going through. Yeah, which was largely about, I mean, yeah, our friendship and the fact that we did, um, I mean, and, and it was reflective of it. And I think through making the movie, we talked about our own experiences and how we felt yeah. at that time, and we probably wouldn't have otherwise. And I think it's, I mean, it's definitely made us better friends. I mean, also just because we made a movie together, so we spent a lot of time together doing yeah, that, yeah, which, I mean, which brought us yeah, closer Yeah, and also, I just when, you know, he was 23, I was 25 when I was yeah. sick, and neither of us were equipped to deal with our emotions. Well, yeah. we didn't know, I certainly didn't know how to talk about it, but, but actually, mm -hmm. you know, when I was writing the movie, and then Seth, you know, was supervising me, you know, that just forced us to have lots of conversations we, we would have never had, and that just ultimately has made us, yeah, yeah made us that closer. Helped. I think you're making a big, Big mistake. What? Don't do this. What are you talking Please about? Please don't do this. You said you're, you liked this You're gonna idea. look stupid. You man. said you would you're do it. You're gonna look weird. Come on, let's just do it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you use this for? You know, my body. When was the last time you cleaned this? Right now. Oh. oh. Yeah. So there was a great quote in the movie with uh, Dr. Uh, Catherine, when she um, said, you can't change the situation. It's the way that you. It's, you can only change the, the way that you deal with the situation. Yeah. So looking back now, as the cancer patient and as the best friend, what would you change? I wouldn't change anything, honestly. You I got mean, a movie. Out of yeah, it went well. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I guess you can always nitpick your own behavior, but like, I couldn't be happier with where we are right now. So. If time travel movies have taught me anything, it's that I should not change anything because it would probably affect what's happening right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I think if there's advice I have for other people, yeah, yeah, it's just that I mean, I think that when you are sick and you're in that, and you're whether you're the sick the person who is sick or you're you're the, the loved one of the person who's sick, I think people get really scared and they always want to have like the know the right thing to say and have the right answer, and ultimately, you know. You, you end up, you, you're never going to say the right thing. You're never going to do the right thing. I mean, yeah. that's what we learned is that there is no right answer. And I think yeah. that, you know, if you just allow yourself to know that you're going you're gonna to mess up at some point and you're not going to communicate properly and you just kind of allow yourself to just laugh about it from time to time, yeah. I think that, that makes the whole situation a lot easier. But what's it called? Schwannoma. I knew this. Schwannoma? Schwannoma. It's Schwannoma? What's Schwannoma? That means tumor, basically. Your I think chances. So. What are your odds? I don't know. I mean, I looked it up and it said 50-50, but that's like the internet, so. It's not that bad. That's better than I thought. You can be fine, man. You're young. Young people beat cancer all the time. The way you, you guys dealt with it was with, 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 like, with humor. Yeah. When you was writing it and when you're acting it and you're saying some of the jokes and do you ever think about your audience and think whether that would kind of offend people or did you just think, you know, sod it, let's just go for it and, you know, yeah. if they like it, they like it. If they don't like it, they don't. You don't make the kind of movies we generally make really worrying about if you're going to offend people. <laughs> and we'll you, find out when we test it exactly, if it's really yeah. offensive. But I mean, it's, uh, it's, it, I mean, I gotta say, as we're shooting it, that almost never comes up. I, I, can, I, I can't think of any time we've, maybe literally once or twice over the 10 years I've been doing this kind of thing, have we been like, maybe we shouldn't do that, that'll offend people. But very rarely has that ever come up. Yeah. I mean, we're not afraid to say it. It's the kind of jokes we would make, as long as it seems like it's from the character. I mean, yeah. that's the thing, like, with my character in the movie is he's, you know, an insensitive guy who's trying to be funny all the time. So it kind of gives me permission to say anything because it, as long as people react to it as though they would if someone said something appalling, yeah. <laughs> then I can say whatever appalling thing I want. Yeah. yeah, as long as you don't betray the characters, as long as you yeah. keep it honest and stay, mm -hmm. make it feel real. Yeah, know. then it works. I really think that a girl's gonna go for me just because I have cancer. For the millionth time, yes! Help me help you get laid. You think that would work? It would totally work. 
All right, let's do it. I love the way that you guys, you know, use the cancer to, to, to get girls and to try and get sex. In real life, what did you guys use the cancer in your advantage to, to get anything, or...? Um, well, we were too terrified of women at that age. Yeah, we <laughs> never tried to get sex from it. We did, uh, opening weekend of Batman Begins, skip the lineup and get in for free. Nice. Because Will had just gotten surgery on his back. And okay. I couldn't walk. And he couldn't wait in the gigantic lineup that we, uh, we, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and I went up to the box office and I said, my friend just had surgery for his cancer. And can, can you let us in? And they let and us they in. Listen for free. It was great. We were just asking to cut the line, but they let yeah, us in for they free. They felt really bad for yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, open your eyes. Surprise! <laughs> His name is Skeletor. He's a retired race dog. You got me an old dog. Oh, well, he's not, he's not that old. He's old enough to be retired. <laughs> Having a dog helps with the healing process. What, does he have a medical license? Seth's helped you in one of the toughest times in your life. What's the toughest, what's the, what have you helped um, with Seth in, in the toughest time in his life? Well, I introduced him to his fiance. It's true. Oh, ago. nice. He brought me out of the, 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 the depths of singledom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Excellent. He now knows how to be a gentleman. Exactly. So. <laughs> it's true. That is very true. And then, you know, Seth, this film is about Will's life. If you were to make a film about your life, what would the plot be? I've made a few, <laughs> honestly. I mean, uh, I think Superbad is very representative of one part of my life, and I think that Knocked Up is very representative of one part of my life, uh, and I think, unfortunately, Pineapple Express is very representative of, <laughs> of the current part of my life in many ways. Um, and, uh, and yeah, uh, we always try to make movies about things that we really relate to and are, and are kind of experiencing. And the one we're working on right now, I, I literally play myself, so it's, uh, it's going to be pretty based on my own experiences.